Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be talking about lead groups, lead generators, and all this kind of stuff. This is in a new playlist, or not really new, this is an add-on to an old playlist that we're going to start going on on the um, symmetries of physics, right? So this is going to be, we're going to dive, we're going to do a deep dive into um, SU2 matrices, SO3 matrices, and all how all of these sort of contribute to the invariances that we're going to call out in physics, right? So the general idea here is that uh, we're going to discover a few things about Lorentz transformations, right? That I'm, I'm sort of giving us a broad overview first, and then we're going to dive, dive into the material. But we're going to um, sort of push our way towards uh, a definition or a very formal definition of what a Lorentz transformation is. And then we're going to find out that those representations of those Lorentz transformations, different types of rep representations, right? So these representations are going to come in the form of matrices, specifically unitary matrices. And these unitary matrices we call generators. And as we scale up in our representations, say two by two matrices, three by three matrices, four by four matrices, five by five matrices, what we're gonna find out is that each one of these matrices act on different types of vectors. But all of these matrices are representations, again, of the Lorentz transformation. So all of this is gonna be connected together in a very cohesive way and I'm drawing from different sources uh, the main source I'm drawing from is going to be uh, physics from symmetry by the same author of the no-nonsense quantum field theory textbook that I'm going over in my other playlist but without further ado let's get in to material so we are talking about the generators of Lie algebras in this video. In this video I want to talk about, we're just going to go over a little bit of a recap of what we've done so far in this playlist because it's been a while. I also want to mention that um, if you enjoy this type of content, I'm going to, I think I'm going to start putting uh, videos for this specific playlist on my Patreon channel so that you can get these videos early if you want to. Also, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. But anyways, we are uh, going into generators of Lie algebras. We want to remind ourselves of a few things, though. So when we, we know that when we exponentiate a matrix, we can get rotation matrices. This is something that we talked about in our quantum field theory playlist. But let's just go over this again, because I want these videos to be somewhat contained. Um, and so... Recall, we can have we can exponentiate something that looks like this, right? So this is a matrix. T is just a parameter, okay? And this is what that looks like, right? So uh, we just, this is a Taylor expansion, essentially, right? So we have a Taylor expansion of, of the exponential, right? So we plug the matrix in to our Taylor expansion. Our parameter gets placed in also, our T parameter. Uh, T is just a name, you can call it theta, you can call it phi, whatever you want. And then f this is going to be, so we'll oop, uh, undo that. This guy here, uh, this is just going to be 1, right? Anything raised to the 0 power is just going to be 1. Um, and so we get this matrix right here. This is the 1 matrix, so the unitary matrix, or not unitary, the identity matrix. Uh, we move on here. This is just to the first power, which is uh, that same matrix. To the second power, we want to... So we have a second power here. That's what this matrix looks like. So we just square this matrix. So it's this matrix times this matrix again. We get this. Then we do this matrix times itself three times. right? So we get this and then this four times, and then eventually the pattern repeats itself, right? So you can pause the video wherever you want. You can take a look at how this pattern works out. But again, this is just a Taylor approximation of the exponential. 
So when we do this, we find out that for the first entry, we get one. For the second entry, we get our t squared. And for fourth entry, we get t to the fourth. Or not fourth entry, but right, the first entry for each even number power. Right, so for even power, we get this. And the same thing is gonna happen here for the, the fourth entry or, the, or the, the last entry in each even number power. That's going to be put right here. I mean, you, you can sort of see how this works out, right? So, what this is telling, so this here looks like, well, this looks like cosine, cosine, minus sine, and sine. So, we compress that all into here. So, what this means is that when we exponentiate something that doesn't really look like a, uh, a rotation matrix, we can actually get a rotation matrix. Okay. So what we want to say, so we're going to call this guy X or chi. We're going to call this guy H of T, right? So a T is the parameter again. So E to the chi, where this is a matrix, um, times the parameter is equal to H of T, right? This is a rotation matrix. And if we zoom in here, right, we could see we could take the derivative of both sides and we're just taking the derivative if this equals if this here equals this we could take the derivative and we could say that this equals this uh, so the derivative of this with respect to t is chi right and it times the e exponential itself again and we just keep this side the same if we set t equal to zero right so this that means this exponential goes to one because e to the zero again is just one, and so we get if this is if this side becomes just chi, right? That side just becomes chi. So chi equals the derivative of our rotation matrix at our parameter equals to zero. So this is the generator for h of t, right? There's a lot of online sources out there that sort of take a lot of time to get to the point here. But what I want to do in this video series is sort of give this to you directly straight to the point. Uh, because a lot of this stuff, uh, when it comes to reading papers on SU2, S, uh, SU3, SO3, all this kind of stuff, this becomes very, very es esoteric very quickly. My aim here is to make this as less or as minimally esoteric as possible and get straight to the point on this because a lot of this stuff can be very confusing to come by at first. So the actual definition that we're going to go with here is that the the generator the generator is the derivative of our rotation matrix at our parameter equals 0, right? So t this is T can be, it can be labeled T, it can be labeled phi. Typically we see uh, phi as our parameter because if phi was our parameter, then our rotation matrix is cosine of phi, right? And minus sine of phi um, and sine. And you get, the, you get the point here, I'll just be complete. Um, uh, cosine of phi. Right, uh, and this would be our h of phi. Um, but yeah, so that that's our rotation matrix, specifically in our two D case. Right. So one last thing that I want to go over um, is that so, so so we've done all this math so far. It's not terribly difficult to see what we've done. Um, but we, we want to note that there is there seems to be lurking here an interesting connection between matrices that seem to not look like rotations, which are what we're calling the generators. Oops. What we're calling the generators and matrices that do look like rotations, right? And those are just the rotation matrices. And so he, here here it is, right? So these are the generators. These things don't look like rotations. Um, but these guys sort of do, right? And uh, rotations by some angle. Right? So, what, so you have sort of this finite case where the, the parameter is outside of the matrix. 
if we exponentiate this, right, exponentiate it, we get our matrix. If we take the derivative of our matrix, of our rotation matrix, going backwards, we get our generator. Our generators, oops, our generators are then going to construct algebras, and our groups construct uh, groups, right? So uh, this is where the idea of group theory uh, plays a big role in, um, in, in physics, right? And algebras are going to play a big role in physics as well. So with that being said, uh, we are going to, uh, this, this is the generator, uh, this is a formal definition of what it means to be a generator of Lie algebra. Uh, in our next video, we're going to go into SO3 matrices, and then in the following video, we're going to go into uh, SU2 matrices. And from there, we're going to find some interesting connections between those two. And we're going to, then after that, we're going to start deep diving into Lorentz transformations, hopefully. And uh, so, yeah, with that being said, I hope you like this content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.